happy Salah to all the Muslim faithfuls all around the world. Welcome to Business Daily. I am Yusuf Akogo. We start with our commodities. Uh, glad to have you back there. Now let's quickly look at the prices of rice, uh, one of the major, uh, I mean, uh, staple food in Africa. Of course, the prices uh, is indeed, uh, as you are seeing on the screen there, uh, in Abuja here is uh, a bag of it. That is a 50 kg, uh, that is half bag of rice. I mean, a 50 kg bag of rice is going for 35,000 and 45,000 naira respectively. In Lagos, it's being sold for 35,000 and of course 45,000 as well. In just Plateau State, uh, 32,000. 500 and, and of course 42,000 naira will get you 50 uh, kg of rice and of course down there in the lorry or uh, north central is being sold for 30,000 between 30,000 and 40,000 uh, as well down there in Ibadan or your state is around 35,000 and 45,000 naira respectively down there in Port Harcourt is even more expensive in the Garden City uh, 36,500 and of course 46,500 naira respectively but in 25 kg in Lagos is going for 17 between 17 and of course 23,000 naira why uh, in Sokoto state same 25 kg is being sold for between 15,000 and 20,000 naira 100 kg bag uh, in Sokoto is also being sold for between 60,000 and 70,000 Naira, indeed, a huge amount of money that you will say. But let's look at the price of beans. Although today is Salah, uh, not uh, much consumption of beans today. Most people uh, are actually a cook rice and, of course, maybe uh, pounded yam in some places, as the case may be. But again, we we'll look at the, back, uh, the cost of beans uh, today. A drum of beans that is 50 kg in Lagos is going for between 30,000 and, of course, 38,000 naira, respectively. In Bruno State, not East Nigeria, is around 27,000 and 35,000 naira. Of course, white beans in Bruno is also going for tw between 22,000 and, of course, 30,000 naira. Down there in Martwef Market in Lagos, 100 kg of white beans is being sold for 36,000 naira. Why in Bodija Market in Oyo State, is going for around 36,000 naira. And down there in Kano State, Dawano Market, to be precise, it's around 35,000 thousand naira why white beans uh, are also the rice one tier now is uh, what we call mudu is going for around 560 naira and of course white beans down there in the budu market in delta state is around uh, 36,000 naira for a 100 kg bag uh, there down in gombe Gombe State, 100 kg is going for around 36,000 naira. Why one mudu at Gombe Main Market is being sold for 250 naira. In Numahia, southeastern Nigeria, uh, with 35,700 naira, you can get a 100 kg bag. And then a paint rubber, a paint bucket, is going for 1,050 naira. Why Oloni, the sweet beans, as they, as they call it, in Ibado, is being, is being sold for 40,000 and 45,000 naira. Why? Uh, it, this 50 kg bag of it in Meduguri is around 28,000 and 42,000 naira respectively. Price is different, difference there, you will see. And in the same in Bruno State, 100 kg is going for 75,000 naira, between 75,000 and of course 90,000 naira. Indeed, a, a huge uh, uh, price there. Uh, 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 I mean, price differential, say you see across different states of the 
federation uh and that is that on commodity price uh today of uh, today of course as you know today is public holiday and the stock market is on break until probably friday when the market will resume again and of course we will be here on business daily to give you updates of everything you need to know from the capital market for now we take a quick break when we come back we go into our discussion don't go away Glad to have you back. It's still Business Daily right here on Trust Television. Now we're going into our discussion properly. We're looking at the uh, MSMEs. There's a report that over 80% of MSMEs in Nigeria don't survive uh, after five years of exi existence. Many of them don't even get to reach five years of existence. So what is the cause of all of these things? Now I'm being joined in the studio by Mr. Joseph Algo. He's a policy analyst. Glad to have you on Business Daily. Yeah, thank you for having me. So it's a pleasure to have you. It's a special day, Saladi, and uh, a barakah de Salah to all the Muslims around the world. Yeah. yeah. So now let's go into the de discussion, the nitty gritty of it. MSMEs in Nigeria, uh, what is the problem? Why is it that many of them don't survive beyond five years? Uh, there, there are a number of uh, factors uh, that are responsible for the um, very high mortality uh, rates amongst um, SME, MSMEs in Nigeria. And um, I'll, I'll put it uh, this way. There are four capitals that are responsible for uh, this uh, very precarious situation in, uh, that we find ourselves as a, a, a nation. The first capital is, um, of course, uh, financial capital. You know, SMEs have had a problem of uh, access to financial capital for mm -hmm. their business. You know, yeah, you go to banks, banks will give you very, very stringent um, Condition. conditions mm -hmm. and the, 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 the rates are not favorable at all. And on top of that, um, major, uh, a, major, a majority of uh, MSMEs source their capital from friends and families. And now with uh, a very static income, and uh, increase in uh, taxes and tariffs. Uh, that's disposable income that should be, uh, should go to funding or, or running or powering SMEs mm. is dwindling. So that's another, and uh, of course, uh, another uh, source of uh, uh, financial capital for MSMEs is um, uh, capital from savings. You know, see what, uh, uh, we, 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 I mean, the situation we find ourselves uh, as a nation. So, savings is a problem at the moment. So, that also would affect uh, the financing of MSMEs. The second capital is human resource. Uh, th there's a problem of the quality of quality or sourcing quality human resource. Uh, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm talking about the employees mm. to really. Uh, run um, by MSMEs. So we're talking about uh, uh, decay in educational system. We're talking about um, uh, the uh, sorry state of our vocational schools. We're talking about so there's a very very serious problem around um, uh, quality or sourcing quality um, human capital. The second, I'll call it ca capital. You know. The general um, environment uh, 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 that the MSME is cited mm. in. Mm. You the know, ease of have, doing business. Of course, you have uh, ease of doing business. You have a very, very uh, um, sorry uh, states uh, um, around infrastructure. I mean, power is a problem. You have uh, road transportation a problem. There is insecurity and so on and so forth. So the general economic cl climate. And then the last one is uh, I'll call it capitalism. You know, uh, government agencies are very quick to um, raise uh, taxes and uh, uh, put in several levies. 
and all of these stifle the growth of MSMEs. On top of the fact that uh, the big corporations, we're talking about the big um, uh, companies, Businesses. Mm. are not uh, very, very accommodating of M MSMEs. They are always uh, looking for opportunities to get um, I mean, food out of the mouth of uh, uh, people this that. Must, uh, 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 uh. Uh, uh, absolutely. Why do you think we're having that kind of discrepancies? Like in some of the uh, developed economies, uh, what you see is that a bulk of uh, the economy there are actually run by small, small businesses. Why are we finding it so difficult to recreate the same thing down here in Africa and particularly in Nigeria? I know the, for, for a very long time, the, the government has not seen um, the small and medium uh, uh, um, part of the economy as very viable. You know, there's this tendency to look always direction of oil. So the government really doesn't see any need to unless uh, uh, medium, uh, micro, uh, small and medium scale or size um, enterprises. Mm. So there is not that intentionality around uh, developing MSMEs in Nigeria. I mean, you go to the United States, for example, you know, you have um, Secretary of Defense, you have Secretary of Health, and so on and so forth. I mean, as of the last administration of Donald Trump, there was a Secretary for Small Businesses in the United States. So, uh, there is that intentionality around... But here we have uh, Spindan as well. I mean, Sweden, Sweden is just an agency. How, how, much, uh, um, how much is it funded? So there's that issue of funding, I mean, necessary funding that should go to MSME. So uh, we, we look at small and medium scale enterprise, I mean, at the level of um, an agency or a parastatal. In developed economies, is at the federal level, is a, is a constant item, is a regular item at the federal level. So there is that very um, strong focus on developing the general environment for SMEs, I mean, in other parts of the world compared so, so to. So, in essence, you're actually saying that MSME should be brought to exclusive lists? I mean, not, not, not that. I mean, well, uh, uh, the, well, well, I'm not saying that. Um, what I'm saying, in essence, is that mm. there should be that seriousness at ensuring that. Um, I mean, the, the, there was the, uh, uh, the presidential um, office of, yes. of doing business. Exactly. Uh, the question is, I mean, what was their schedule? How much funding went to it? How much were they able to do? Of course, they did. Uh, the best that they could, but mm. it's not just that interventionist um, uh, route that we should always seek to no, take. So what you're we saying make that it a regular. We don't think that the, the trader monies item. and all of that that were actually uh, implemented by the last administration works in any way. I mean, it doesn't work anyway. Just we're just uh, uh, papering the cracks. It really doesn't drill to addressing the issues that uh, bedevils uh, um, small and medium scale enterprises in Nigeria. What about the government policies? So much has happened in the last couple of weeks, the issue of uh, subsidy removers and so on and so forth. And of course, we're expecting the, uh, a new, another subsidy removal again by the 1st of July, this time electricity. So to what extent do you think uh, MSME, MSMEs rather will, will suffer some of this uh, subsidy that has so far been removed? By of course, uh, we, have, we have seen a, a slow, um, almost a, a rapid, let me not say slow, a rapid uh, a decrease in the, the amount of MSMEs in Nigeria. You know, I mean, you quoted uh, statistics about 80%. Mm, 80%, percent I don't uh, survive five survive years. Five years. Mm. I, mean, I mean, some, some analysts will say just 5% make it after five years. So... Government, this, I mean, removal of, uh, as much as I support the removal of petroleum subsidy, I think it should have gone more than 10 years ago. But the question again is, as much as these um, uh, economic or measures by the government are necessary, the question is, what buffers, what um, uh, uh, shocks, palliatives, uh, palliatives mm -hmm. have the government designed to really protect uh, or insulate MSMEs from the adverse effects of these uh, uh, sudden policy change. Mm. Uh, indeed, so, uh, it appears that there's no palliative, just like you say, but again, we're waiting on government to do something. Actually, I think there's a plan. I think it's on ground, so we're hoping that uh, something is done about that. Now, let's look at uh, 
the role of Smidan itself as an agency. It's an agency of the federal government uh, that has, over the years, you know, trying to bring all the MSMEs in Nigeria together. I think over 39 million of them uh, that we have, based on the data from the data from uh, Smidan. So, to what extent do you think they have achieved some of the aims? I mean, some of their the responsibility assigned to them by by the government. Um, I, I think, um, I'm, I'm, and again, this is my opinion from what I've seen. I've had uh, very few interactions with uh, Smedan, Smedan, and from what I, I mean, from my own um, uh, point of view, uh, what I see uh, Smedan, Smedan doing is uh, trying to focus on getting as much SMEs on stream. I mean, the question is not just getting them on stream. The question is developing that environment that keeps them going. Mm. So it's not about registering. I mean, go to CAC today. People are registering uh, business uh, names or limited liability companies every day. But how many of these companies are really operating. survive? Mm. How many of them are operating? I was at a very popular uh, plaza um, some days ago, so about a week ago. And there was uh, two situations. The first one was a businessman. I mean, the, it was a logistics uh, company. They rented the space. And for several months, they have not been operating. And the second situation was this person paid for one year and has not been able to uh, start business. So, I mean, it's not just uh, getting people to That's also, uh, register uh, businesses, mm -hmm. I mean, reducing the fee around uh, uh, CAC registration and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. There are deeper legacy issues that we need to address. And Smedan, I don't think, has that mandate to really address those uh, underlying issues that mm -hmm. bedevil the growth and development of MSMEs. Because in indeed, there are also a lot of MSMEs in the informal sectors yeah. that are actually doing very well. Many of them are not even registered with CAC, but they are doing very, very well and contributing to the employment situation in Nigeria. I don't think uh, that thing, too, uh, is a plus for the government as well. Of course, uh, I mean, they talk about uh, informal, um, uh, or, uh, informal businesses sector. doing uh, that are not captured uh, by the government doing very well. I mean, that's a discussion for another day. But the essence is this: the the small um, MSMEs that are really uh, doing very well or managing to survive are either sole proprietorships that is one more one man business mm -hmm. or family uh, businesses mm -hmm. like for example the Akarasela for example I mean the person that grinds the, grinds the beans is her daughter if she's not feeling so fine the person that takes over is her daughter mm -hmm. the same thing with the vulcanizer he, he and his son uh, is uh, the vulcanizer and his son the same thing for the Igbo trader the wife is the one that manages the business most times when he travels to get uh, uh, goods to stock his shop. So, family businesses and uh, sole uh, proprietorships. And I think uh, Smedan should look in that direction because sustainable businesses, again, this is from my own observation, are businesses that are family driven or sole proprietorships. Mm, indeed, sustainable. I mean, <laughs> well, that is the opinion, just like you said. Uh, but again, let's look at um, government interventions. Government has done so much to revive some, some MSMEs, even, or to even keep them afloat, to keep them in business. Do you think MSMEs operators themselves have their own issues? We see instances where palliatives or interventions uh, funds are given to them at the, and at the end of the day some of this money are not invested back into back into the business their own businesses the, i mean instead of that they use it to buy some other things that may not necessarily impact positively on their businesses are we should we continue to blame governments oh the no we, uh, the government has a, the, the largest percentage of uh, blame but again i i you know i mentioned the human capital and this is not just about uh, employee. Mm -hmm. This also extends to the managers of the business or the proprietor, the, the brain behind that business. You know, some of these um, co-founders need training. Mm -hmm. Some of them need uh, proper guidance and supervision. So these people have a share of the blame, but I can say 
categorically that the government has the largest percentage of blame o of the blame so you are actually blaming <coughs> government for all all the issues no, no not all the issues most of the most issues. of the issues yeah. okay uh, as we as we try to wrap up uh, now this discussion now uh what do you think this new government will do because now there is a, uh, the campaign on the premises that uh, will also create employment for Nigeria. And the only way to create employment is by creating an enabling environment for small businesses to thrive. Because, fed, I mean, uh, government cannot employ everybody, as we have yeah. always said. But now, what do you think, what template do you think that you apply to succeed in this, in the, in this uh, plan of theirs? I think the, there, are, there are so many things that the government can look into, but... Um, I'll just mention a few. Number one is the issue of power. And uh, the energy uh, requirement for running SMEs. So we're talking about the cost of diesel, for example, the cost of charcoal, mm. I mean, the cost of firewood, and so on and so forth. It's a very uh, long uh, list of items. The second is insecurity. Now, a, I mean, a large percentage of uh, small uh, businesses or people in that are farmers, you know, uh, subsistence uh, farmers. Mm. And there's, I mean, vast mm. uh, uh, uncultivated lands in, especially in the northern part of Nigeria. And these lands are not uncultivated because of uh, 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 the absence of a desire. Mm. Is the fact that a lot of these farmers are afraid of going into these uh, places to uh, farm. So insecurity um, um, in the farms across the north, insecurity in the southern part of Nigeria, because mm. whether we like it or not, insecurity is a big challenge in the southern part of Nigeria. Then there's the also, uh, also the problem of access to funding. Mm. You know, that's a big issue. And, of course, I know there is a long list of items. The, the, the last point I'll, I'll, I'm going to make is educational system. We need to reimagine our educational system and retool it so that it produces highly skilled human resource that we need as a nation to really power MSMEs. MSMEs. Okay, let's, uh, let's uh, almost finally now. Another issue again that uh, I think we should look at is the issue of uh, uh, the fact that some MSMEs want to make it, you know, uh, quickly. They making uh, making it quick syndrome. Uh, you, you invest today, you want to start reaping tomorrow. Don't you think that is also another major problem? Instead of maybe you invest in a business and they give it at least a timeline, three, four, five years before you start expecting profits. So the issue of MSME, I mean, believing that uh, once you invest today, you can reap tomorrow. Or don't you think that is also an, another major concern? I think it's not uh, necessarily their fault. Um, the very harsh economic climate doesn't uh, give room for patience uh, uh, with MSMEs. You know, you don't have that latitude. You don't have five years mm -hmm. to really make profit. If you don't make profits the first year, you're, you're good as dead. Mm. So there is that um, impatience. But should that be the plan? Should that be the way it should be? I mean, in, in, in the world, I mean, for, 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 for people that went to business school, they tell uh, there's this talk around um, uh, or calculation around the fact that you should have like a two years plan, uh, plan mm. and you should have enough capital to run your business for two years. I mean, uh, 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 you should also simulate the idea that in the first two years, it might not make any profit. But in Nigeria, the average business person doesn't have that Patience. luxury, mm. doesn't have that opportunity. So you either make money, I mean, some, for some businesses, you'd have to make money in the first two months <laughs> because the amount of capital coming, to, uh, coming out to fund that business, maybe from your savings, maybe from a previous work, mm. or from, let's say, money or a loan, or maybe money from uh, a parent or a relative. So there is not that opening or window for the average Nigerian business person to exercise mm. patience. Mm. And uh, the truth is that there's, 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 there, that, that comes with disadvantage because 
uh, the lack of exercise of patience would open that business person to taking very rash and wrong decisions that will ultimately ground ground the business. business. Maybe part of the problem why many of them don't even reach five years. Exactly. Uh, uh, survive five years. Uh, uh, Joseph Ango, policy analyst, I must thank you for your time on Business Daily today. Thank you very much. Yes, you're yeah, welcome. So with that is a wrap on the show today. Join us again tomorrow for more. I am Yusuf Akogu.